to the show. This is The Law Show on CL 650. I'll put a spell on you. And welcome back to The Law Show on CL650. We're talking about separation and divorce uh, with our family law lawyers, David Halkett, a partner at Macquarie Hunter, and Leah Donaldson, an associate. Now, before the break, we were talking about uh, the fees and contested uh, divorces versus ones where it's kind of amicable and they can move through rather quickly. So uh, I'll paint a picture for you. Um, your your fees, say, add up to $25,000, okay? And then the, the other parties, maybe it's $40,000 for whatever reason somebody's got a junior lawyer working one you've got a senior lawyer so you've got different amounts right so um how is that decided who pays like if i if i retain a lawyer and i'm getting a divorce am i responsible for those fees or are you jointly responsible or do you take the amount of money and you split it either like how does that how do you get to that settlement um it- Unless the parties agreed otherwise, no one ever does, you're responsible for your own lawyer's Mm -hmm. costs. So whatever the division of assets are at the end, uh, that comes out of your end. Yeah. It's not 50-50. We'll put both fees together and divide it. Unless you agree to that. Yeah. And the um, if you go to court and lose, costs can be imposed against you. Mm -hmm. um, And that's a partial reimbursement of your legal costs that the other side pays. But it's based on a tariff and it's not nearly... What, you what the real costs are. Yeah. So can you give me an example of a price? Um, I think uh, for every day of trial, you get $2,000 costs. Generally, at, at, say, my hourly rate to attend a trial and do work at night, usually rough, roughly 10 hours, you're probably looking then at, you know, close to $4,000. So it's maybe about half. Mm-hmm. And then there's all the other costs before that you don't get back on the cost tariff. But uh, it, it's just there to try and... Um, reimburse you a little bit if you're successful in court. Do you ever, Leah, get a couple that wants one lawyer to represent both sides? We do, yeah. So there is there are lawyers that do that service, and it's actually called collaborative um, law. So we don't um, provide that service. Um, we act for one party alone. Mm-hmm. So we can't give advice to two people at once. That's basically a mediator or a collaborative lawyer can do that. Um, we can act for one party, and the other party can choose not to be represented by a lawyer. Um, but ideally, both parties have their own lawyer to provide them with their own legal advice, and then they can still come to an agreement and a resolution without going to court. And whatever in fees they incur, they are responsible. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So um, do you ever get where they pay out of the proceeds and split it? Or is that pretty much not uh, not not usually for uh, for the cost because you have no um, no power to tell the other party he's paid too much or she's paid too much. What sometimes they do do once everything's been resolved and there's say a drafting of the separation agreement or obtaining a divorce at the end on an uncontested basis, you may say that one party will reimburse the other up to X amount of dollars for a percentage of the separation agreement or the divorce. Okay, so um, I'm quickly learning this is an expensive uh, process. So you're talking roughly Mm $50,000 plus for both sides to get to um, a resolution. How can you shave some of that off? Is there any common sense stuff you can do? Well, certainly I think the, um, as as an individual, you can take your lawyer's advice if he's, he or she is telling you take this position because, you know, it's the most realistic position. Accept the advice. Don't take unrealistic positions. Um, try to take the emotion out of it. And if you can, try and resolve things uh, out of court through mediation, um, settlement meetings between the lawyers. Disclose when you're supposed to. Don't hide your assets or try to hide your income or or just refuse to do it because it's going to drive your cost up. So the, the avenue of least resistance. Exactly. Right? Go with the flow. Move things along. Yeah. And then you'll get there quickly. If your lawyer's telling you you're likely going to have to pay spousal support, on for whatever reason, you can take the position that you're not going to, but it's likely you're going to have to pay it and you're going to pay your lawyer's fees anyway. Um, Disclose the income, reach a reasonable settlement, and then everyone can go off and be happy. And uh, do you ever have clients that come in and they say, okay, we want to get a divorce, you've talked about it, and then they say, well, we're going to go off and between us 
try and figure this out and come back, you know, 80, 90 percent result. Do you ever get yep, that? We do often, actually. And those are the cheapest ones. The people that they work together, they work within a certain amount of parameters. They come back. They both get legal advice to make sure that they're both protected. And then that agreement is drafted by a lawyer to make sure that it's effective and enforceable. And they both sign it. And those are the quickest and the cheapest. Yep. And, you know, it, people are, sometimes people think that everything has to be exactly equal. Well, equitable doesn't necessarily mean equal in certain situations. If someone wants to give up some of their rights that they'd be entitled to, to reach a settlement so that everyone can go on, as long as they understand their legal rights and they've got independent legal advice and the full disclosure, as adults, we're allowed to do that. Hmm. So, well, Can you give me an example? What would that Well, mean? say, for example, it's been a, a longer marriage and the house should be divided equally. But one party says, look, you know, just resolve it. I'll give you 55% instead of take only 50 uh, or I'll take 45 instead of the 50 I'm entitled to. As long as you know that you're entitled to the half, um, there's nothing wrong with saying I'll take less just to resolve it. You know, is within reason, of course, and for valid reasons. Um, when it comes to spells of sports, someone may think I should get at the high end of the range. We have ranges between a low, middle, and a, and a high range. The person may say I'll take the lower end for a less amount of time than I might get just to resolve it. There's nothing wrong with doing those things. Now, with spousal support, how long does um, the other party have to pay? Is it indefinitely? Is it forever? I mean, you, you, this is maybe one of the reasons why people have this notion that, well, if I have to pay my ex, I'm going to be paying them forever. Is that the case? It depends on the, the length of marriage, the, um, the roles played in the marriage, whether there was children and how old the children are. Um, one rule of thumb is half a year to a year for, uh, for every year of marriage. Um, if the year age and the length of marriage equals more, equals 65 or more, then it's indefinite maintenance. Uh, but indefinite again, doesn't mean until Forever. eternity, it, it, until change in circumstances. So, um, those are things that definitely you should get legal advice on as to, because every case has its own factors. And I also heard, which is might just be, you know, uh, urban legend that if someone gets remarried, then that support ends. No, not necessarily. No, no. Depends on the basis of it. Yeah, it does. So there's, there's lots of circumstances that go into it and it depends on parties' incomes, the ages of the parties. And so it, it's completely dependent on certain factors. Sometimes that can terminate spousal support, um, but it depends. If you remarried someone that's on a disability pension, for instance, that's not going to terminate your spousal. If you remarry someone that has $10 million, that might. Uh -huh. And it also depends on if the maintenance was payable on what they call non-compensatory basis. So that's a needs-based. So do you still have a need? But if it's compensatory... You're, you're being compensated for typical cases, the stay-at-home mother who stayed at home and gave up her career for 20 years. Um, and so by the time she gets back to the workforce, she's behind the eight balls, never going to get a job. You got compensated well, not for all at that the loss. Not at the level they were before. Exactly. exactly. All right. Now, um, when you have somebody that's getting um, a certain amount of money every month, is it always the man to the woman or are we seeing that flipped on no, its head? It, 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 it varies. Usually it's... The usual case is the man paying the wife, but that's only because in society men still make more. Uh, if um, if the wife makes more, there's no reason she shouldn't be paying it as well. And and the, and the law just looks the at the law numbers. applies it the exact same. And you're seeing that it's flipping around a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. definitely more than when I first did it. And of course, with same sex marriages, you know, you can have a woman paying a woman or a man paying a man as well. So yeah. All right, so um, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll continue talking about family law and uh, breaking up of uh, family, and we'll get into maybe a little bit about the kids and uh, how that works when sure. we come back next on CL650. There's more of the show still ahead. This is The Law Show on CL650.